Trucking is one of the largest industries in the U.S. Every day, a truck moves 150 pounds of goods per American. Trucks make up 70% of all freight volume. The trucking industry generates over $800 billion of revenue per year. There's a saying in the industry that encapsulates how integral trucking is to the economy. If you bought it, a truck brought it. Everything on the planet is delivered by truck other than babies. I mean, this thing, this thing, this thing, it was all brought here on a truck. For such a large industry, it's plagued with a major problem. The trucking industry is faced with a severe shortage of truck drivers. America has a shortage of truckers. Between the explosive growth of online shopping and the new safety regulations that make it so existing truckers can't spend as much time on the road, we don't have enough drivers to keep the system running smoothly. I think the biggest cause to the driver shortage is, is it just doesn't pay anymore. And as e-commerce grows, so does the need for ultra-fast delivery. A report from the American Trucking Association says that the trucking industry needs to hire nearly 900,000 more drivers to meet rising demand. But technology might fix that. Several companies are developing trucks that can drive without a human driver. Autonomous trucking is going to be huge worldwide. The freight companies want self-driving trucks primarily because it will help them bring down the cost of driving a shipment of goods from point A to point B. Autonomous is really going to revolutionize logistics. And that's not just in terms of price. It's actually all throughout the stack. So it's obviously being able to do things a lot more fuel efficiently, a lot more cost efficiently, but it's also being able to go two and a half times as far in a single day. It also changes things from a insight perspective. We have a really good sense of insight into we're gonna arrive sometime between 11.15 and 11.44, and it arrives in that window. Amazon in particular has pushed forward the demand for fast deliveries. Everybody wants to keep up with Amazon, and so the need to get something from point A to point B as quickly and reliably and inexpensive as possible, that need is just getting bigger and bigger. It'll still be some time before the technology and regulation allow fully driverless vehicles on the road. For now, the semi-autonomous technology that's being tested still requires a human behind the wheel in case they need to take over. But still, driverless trucks could beat autonomous cars to the roads. A self-driving truck has a much more predictable route to drive because much of it is gonna be on the highway. And that's why you will see self-driving trucks take off much quicker than you will robo-taxis. Working on technologies for robo-taxis is more like uh, playing a game like Street Fighters, where there is an action, you have a reaction, but you have to react very instantly after the, the action. So, but driving an autonomous truck on the highway at 65 miles per hour is more like an angry bird. You aim, you shoot, and then you wait. From big tech to startups, companies are pouring money into trucking. Google's self-driving company, Waymo, recently expanded to include trucking. It started a pilot program in 2018 carrying freight to Google's data centers in Atlanta and is conducting road tests in California and Arizona. Volvo has been deploying this tech to help miners in Norway and farmers in Brazil. It even developed a concept for a cabless truck. Tesla is working on fully autonomous vehicles and is beta testing a lot of its technology in its vehicles right now. If it can get to the point where that technology is working consistently and it can offer that technology in a Tesla semi, that could be very attractive for a lot of trucking and shipping companies. One of the more established startups to enter the space, Embark, has been developing autonomous trucks since 2016. Last year, one of its trucks traveled 2,400 miles from L.A. to Jacksonville, Florida, without intervention from a driver. Its CEO, Alex Rodriguez, is just 23 years old. Brandon, my co-founder, and I uh, sat down and said, what do we actually think this can be deployed into? We looked at pretty much every application, and trucking really stood out as having a feasible technical solution while also having a truly gigantic impact. Embark is still testing its fleet, but it's carrying actual freight and generating revenue while it does so. Embark has a bunch of customers that we move freight for today. These are large shippers, usually people who spend over a billion dollars a year on trucking, uh, who are excited about our potential to improve both their costs, but also the efficiency and operational effectiveness. Our system is an exit-to-exit self-driving system. It doesn't do the entire task. Instead, you have local drivers in the city who pick the freight up from a hub, 
and then do the final delivery. And all we do is take it from the hub onto the freeway and then 1,000, 2,000 miles away to a hub at the destination city. Too Simple is another company working on self-driving trucks. It's raised $175 million and is valued at over a billion dollars. It's headquartered in San Diego and China. The company was founded in 2015 with the single idea that autonomous trucks will be the first to commercialize. Too Simple will develop the full software solution. We are the technology integrator and we're partnering with leading OEMs, tier ones, and sensor suppliers to produce a commercial ready truck that's capable of self-driving. Like Embark, Too Simple is also hauling freight for customers while testing its fleet of trucks. Our technology validation fleet, that will grow to 50 trucks by June of this year. Those 50 trucks will generate about 1 million test miles a month. The second phase is we will offer large fleets and shippers the ability to purchase autonomous trucks through our OEM partners. We will help these fleets operate and that will be a subscription-based model. Self-driving trucks like these are equipped with cameras, radar, and LiDAR sensors. This gives the truck a complete 360-degree view of what's happening around the vehicle. After we get this holistic view, surrounds the vehicle, uh, we actually estimate the properties of every single vehicle. We have to know the lo exact location of that vehicle, relative distance, and even the relative speed, even their future intentions. And once we know all this information, we put everything onto the map. This information is then fed into its motion planning module, navigating the truck to its destination. What we want is a fully autonomous system that doesn't require a human to correct the problem. It will correct the problem by itself. We're still in the development phase, but my expectation is that by the end of 2020, we will demonstrate a fully autonomous, driverless operation without a human sitting in the vehicle. Embark and Too Simple both use existing trucks built by Peterbilt and are focusing on creating the software. Other startups in the space include Starsky Robotics, Ike, and Kodiak. Most of these companies are tackling long-haul trucking, trips over 250 miles that can keep drivers away from home for weeks at a time. Jeff Scorcher has been a truck driver for 22 years and says the long hauls are the hardest part of the job. It's a demanding job. A lot of people aren't used to working uh, 70 hours. If you get a, a, an emergency at home that you need to be home for, you're stuck and you're obligated to that load. Most companies aren't going to put you on a plane and send you home. They're going to say, bring the truck back and you can go home once you get the truck back. They just want to get that freight moved. One of the biggest bottlenecks facing the trucking industry is regulation on how long drivers can work. To combat fatigue, they're only able to drive for 10 hours a day. But the advent of self-driving tech could make that a thing of the past. This is one of the things that excites Jeff the most about the technology. One scenario that, that always excited me, what if you had a truck where you went and did the delivery, put it on autopilot and jumped in the back and went to sleep for 10 hours or eight hours or however much you want to sleep and didn't have to sit at a truck stop all night. That would be way more efficient. You're gonna make way more money and, and still get rest because sitting at a truck stop for 10 hours is not the funnest thing to do. Being able to operate 24 hours a day instead of the legally limited 10 hours a day is going to have huge implications. We're talking about the difference between crossing the country taking five days and crossing the country taking two days. Having trucks that are almost able to match the speed of air freight. When you think about autonomous driving, Trucking is the most logical first place to see that deployed for many reasons. Uh, safety is the simplest one. You know, there are less accidents with 18 wheelers on the road than there are with cars. But they cause a lot more destruction of property and a lot more death. If you're running an autonomous truck, it's going to drive at the speed in which it's allowed to drive. And since it could drive 24 7, it'll be more productive along the way. And now that computers can see, and they can understand the world around them, they can start to do the basic task of driving. And it turns out that computers are actually better drivers than people because one, computers don't get bored. They're 100% vigilant all the time, and as a result, they'll end up being more safe than human drivers. Safety-wise, the truck could hold a lane better than most humans. I was one of the bigger skeptics uh, in the beginning. I definitely come from the old school mentality of, of truck drivers, like, oh, you can never replace you know, a human. That's why it's so awesome coming to work here and kind of being proven wrong a little bit. It's pretty amazing to, to sit back and literally watch hundreds of miles go by and you had no intervention, the truck's just doing it. But even the most advanced technology still struggles with bad weather. There's definitely aspects to driving that are 
tougher to handle than, than others, whether that's adverse weather and crazy traffic situations. You know, it's gonna definitely take some time to, to work those things out. We like to, to stick to our Southern roots right now. And, you know, rain's not a huge issue, but definitely snow and ice would be, and it is for a human driver too. This technology could also save money in fuel and maintenance costs because of the consistent, efficient driving. Embark is able to take a system which matches a driver with 30 years of experience and deploy it across our entire fleet. And so uh, we're actually able to see huge fuel economy benefits, actually a lot bigger than many of the changes that you see made to engines or to aerodynamics come from just driving the truck better. We anticipate that the total saving will be about 20% to 30%. Thanks to the localization algorithm that we have, our vehicle can drive straight on the road. It doesn't really uh, do fishtailing at all, so it doesn't scrub the tire. So uh, extend the lifetime of a tire is also another saving for the uh, efficiency. Just as there has been in other industries, there are concerns about how this technology might affect the jobs of drivers, with fears they might be replaced altogether. Embark doesn't want to completely remove the profession of truck drivers. What Embark wants to do is just take the, quite frankly, the boring stuff in the middle that is better suited for a computer than a person, and Embark can do that from hub to hub, and then the last mile, you still need a person to take stuff from the last mile from the hub to somebody's doorstep. Truck drivers will be needed for many decades to come, and so when we explain that, and that what we're really doing is taking a significant number of unfilled routes that currently don't have anybody working on them where we have a driver shortage and filling those with a combination of driverless trucks hub to hub and then local drivers which are the exact type of job everyone's most excited about in the trucking industry they realize oh this is actually going to create the job for the next generation of trucker. There's been uh, mixed reviews across the board. You find the guy that is kind of excited about it. You come across a driver that basically gives us the finger and says, you're killing all these jobs and you're doing all these terrible things to the trucking industry. Um, I like to tell them, you gotta keep an open mind. More than anything, Jeff is hopeful that this technology will improve the lives of truckers. Trucking is like probably one of the biggest thankless jobs out there. Everybody wants their stuff. Everybody wants it cheap. They don't care how it gets there. They don't think about the guy who got divorced because he wasn't home or the guy that missed his kid's soccer game or whatever. And, and I think the general public just doesn't understand that side of trucking. They just know that their stuff's on the shelves and that's all they care about. I've had way too many of my friends and, and you know, family members that were drivers that have been divorced. And, you know, I've seen way too many of my buddies that didn't see their kids grow up and they really regret it. They really do.